Okay, so step one of this is going to be to put the proper size shim into the clamp. And this clamp is going to go on the front and the back of the catalytic converter as close as you can get to the catalytic converter. Now, these shims are marked. And you can see there, that one says 300, even though it's got the O in the middle cut out. Three inch pipe is, is what is on mine. Yours may be different. Um, in order to do this, there is a little bit here. You're gonna need a quarter inch socket, but for this part, it's on there so loose right now. I mean, I did the first one just by putting that in there and turning it with my finger. And then I have the three inch one in there in this. And so it looks about like this. And then this part's gonna go on the front and the back. And then we'll feed through the loops. When we go to tighten it all up, it's gonna bind against it so where nothing moves. So that's the first step is this part here. Okay, when you go to put these on underneath here, yes, notice I do have a bright pink catalytic converter um, because mine's been stolen. So we're doing this. Anyhow, when you go to do this, do it sideways to start with. You will hate your life much less trying to attach these bolts if you have gravity working in your favor. Um, to start them, I just do it without the ratchet on just to kind of get it in there a little bit and then I have the ratchet nearby. Also, if you have one that's magnetic, um, you will be grateful for that at some point in this in this job. So I just kind of hold them. And I'm pushing with my finger a little bit to get it going. It's a little awkward because I've got the camera where, where I kind of want my face to be. Um, so I'm a little sideways at the moment, but that's okay. Under the RV, there is a fairly decent amount of room to work. So anyhow, just get it started. And then once it's actually started pretty good, then you can turn it over the proper way, bring it all the way up close to the base of the catalytic converter, like the instructions tell you. And then now you can tighten it down. So I'm going to stop filming so that I can get to the spot I want to be to make this a little easier on myself. Okay, so the next part, part involves finding a secure spot on the front of the vehicle to attach this one to and you're just gonna basically gonna loop it on through um, in this instance I found a, a frame piece that has a nice hole I could thread through and go back down um, it's much easier life will be much easier if you uncurl all the rope first and lay it out also, I highly recommend moving it out of the sun while you're putting the clamps on. Notice my clamps are on super loose right now. Um, that's going to be kind of important to be able to feed this through very well. So I will, they're just finger tightened up. And as I run this rope back and forth, then after, I, after all of that, I will go ahead and tighten it down. Um, but right now we need to have the play in order to be able to pull this through because this is this is pretty heavy duty and you don't want to get it anywhere near anything that's going to move. So like right now I'm laying right next to the drivetrain. Um, so I want to make sure I keep it far away from that. So you want it on pieces of frame here, something that's not going to be able to move. And then once it's all tightened down, you're not going to you don't want it up against anything it's gonna rub either um so yeah i'm gonna thread this through some more and come back in a few minutes okay i have this on there finally um i'm not gonna tell you it was easy uh the the big trick that i found is you really have to stretch your cable out first and make sure um, that you're trying to get it level on both sides and then just be patient, um, maybe having a pair of pliers that you can crunch the end down a little bit on the cable. I had one cable that had a part sticking out, so I couldn't get it through. 
the last times it was so I kind of had to beat it up a little bit with the socket wrench to get it to fit sorry I'm gonna try not to make you too sick seasick here the back cables goes all the way through um, then I tightened it up as I'm tightening it up some of these cables they would have slid real easy now they don't move at all they're there they are really seriously in there um, back here I went over the frame no moving parts be very careful about that you really don't want to get to the end of this job and then discover that you have wrapped it around something you desperately need now the last thing that I'm gonna do is I, there's some cable ties some big ones I'm gonna cable tie all this stuff together and make it nice and neat so that I don't have this uh, big jumble kind of hanging down there um, this one's not too bad down here but I want to make sure all of this is as tight as it can get. Like I said, once this is torqued down, man, these things don't go anywhere. Um, so realize that you're going to have to spend some time. I think I've been out here, oh gosh, I don't even want to admit to how long, maybe two hours or so. Um, trying to get all this through. These were not the easiest thing. Once I got them going, they were pretty good. You may want to actually have a screwdriver or something that you can put through the hole that you're not using so that you can kind of leverage it leverage it to where you can get enough of a gap to be able to go through also don't get this don't get don't lean on this stuff um i accidentally put my head on it and then when i went to pull on it man that tears your hair and that is not much fun so um yeah i'll come back in just a few minutes and show you the finished product once i get the cable ties on there but uh, it was a heck of a job. It was not really that hard as long as you go slow. So anyhow, um, let me get the cable ties on and I'll show you the finished product. Okay, I have zip tied the hell out of this thing. Uh, so now we have no dangly bits. Everything is secured all the way back. Um, yes, I've got it around the frame back here. Uh, I'm doing this on an RV, so I've got a lot more room to work with. I'm actually sitting up underneath, which is uh, kind of entertaining. Um, this is an absolutely doable job. You can do this. It needs a little patience. It needs a little bit of being able to wiggle back and forth underneath. And, and that's really about it. Now, this is the more expensive cat clamp. This is the nearly $500 one or $425 or whatever it is. Um, however getting my catalytic converter stolen they said this one was probably worth the OEM one was probably worth about four or five hundred dollars scrap and it cost me eighteen hundred dollars to repair replace I spray painted it pink my VIN number is engraved in it in three different spots and I put the cat clamp on it I will actually even put the um stickers in the window because I don't want to go through this again uh, it took the shop two weeks to be able to get the part the parts are hard to come by right now because everybody's getting their stolen this is a worthwhile investment protect your investment um, buy yourself a cat clamp it's it's a afternoon project and you can totally do this you can totally do this and I can see why they're not gonna want this thing for one thing this is a replacement catalytic converter and it's worth about $15 in scrap so it's not worth anywhere near as much money as an OEM one um, yes so there you have it I'm attached to the frame on both sides and you know if this nearly 55 year old female can do this so can you so anyhow I recommend it Thanks a lot for watching. Good luck.